All right. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to God Talks today. And I'm with a dear friend. This is Pastor Nate Schlegel from Arkansas. And we're just so glad to have you on, man. And uh, as I mentioned before, that deer that you have in the back there, I want everyone to know that he probably wrestled that on his own. <laughs> this, this is no ordinary man or pastor here. This guy is bare hands. Bare hands. This is Samson in real life, just so everyone can get a little glimpse of him. So, oh man, Nate, we're just so glad to have you, man. You're you're such a such a gift to us, and we just so so appreciate your time sharing and taking the time just to share what's on your heart, especially in this season that we're in. And we would love to just really hear from you and some things that the Lord's been speaking to you about. Well, cool. Well, um, I'm really excited for this opportunity to just share with you and, uh, and obviously your people too. But, um, uh, you know, this, this time in which we're in, uh, it seems kind of crazy. And, you know, um, I was sharing with our, with our team yesterday morning uh, just some of the things the Lord was talking to me about. And so many times um, what happens in our lives is we create structure right? Or rather people over us, the leadership above us or our jobs, our bosses, um, uh, create in a sense a pathway for us to walk on mm. um, because of the accountability factor, because you show up to get a check. Um, and, and so there's a, there's a structure that's often set by our lives um, uh, and, and things that we, we do because there's a goal in our life, which is maybe to, you know, go to school, uh, graduate from college, uh, get married, you know, uh, yeah. have 1.5 or 2.5 or, or four, uh, four, you know, uh, children and, and, you know, um, you know, have the picket fence or whatever and, uh, you know, retire, you know, with the gold watch. In other words, there's, there's mm -hmm. things that are set, uh, set, our, set our days and often what sets our days in, in, and you'll find this in this time that a lot of people uh, seem to be struggling with the, the lack of direction mm. that's set by one above them, right? And and so like just happen to be at home or just happen to just be with the kids or this, that, the other thing. And one of the things that I was sharing with our, our staff yesterday, because even in, in my time, you know, you're not coming to church like you, you know, even for you, you know, you're not coming to church like you were, you yep. know, you're doing things differently. And so trying to find traction on how to do things differently, a lot of times what ends up, we're we're in a place where we're doing things uh because of authority over us but it's not underneath the necessarily the lord's direction it's just mm -hmm. called life right. right yeah and um anyway so i was just asking the lord you know what about in this time because because you can't really measure you know so many times we're measuring how we're doing based upon a paycheck mm -hmm. we're measuring how we're doing based upon you know who's who's given us an attaboy at the water yeah. cooler or at work or you know, or you get the job done, you get the paycheck, you get the, whatever it is, you, you, there's a, there's a success and a value that's added to you based upon your performance. Right. Right. Yeah. Based upon what you're doing. And, and there's a fulfillment in that, right? Like most people are, they've chosen jobs based upon a calling or based upon a gifting. And so there is a satisfaction for you and I to steward uh, those gifts. Right. Yeah. Um, but oftentimes they move from just where we started uh, to where that just is now the satisfaction is what we're living for. Yeah. We're living for, and, and when that goes away because of uh, the time or the calendar or, you know, uh, what we can or can't do changes. Right. We find ourselves struggling to put order to our days. Mm. And, um, and, and so just, and really, and I say order to our days because even in this time, I believe God wants progress. Yeah. Yeah. He wants progress with you. He wants progress with, you know, with us and with our families, with us spiritually, with just uh, all these, those kind of things. He wants progress. But in order to progress, we're going to have to have some order to our days. Yeah. We're going to have to know in a sense, like to start in, in, in the end, not that there's an arrival, but that there is a stewardship to what God has, or, and, and, and that we're taking advantage of this time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Anyway, so I was asking the Lord about that and uh, just praying in the spirit. You know, we were hanging out. It was Sunday afternoon. Uh, got to go take the kids fishing and things like that. And so just got to see God's creation. And, and we've been in this in this series uh, the last couple of weeks just talking about creation and how it speaks of his you know, attributes and just the greatness of God in Romans chapter one, it tells us that it tells us of his power and all the, just the characteristics of God. So we were out just enjoying that. And I found myself just praying in the spirit, 
Why, why, why do I say that? Well, because the Bible tells us that when we do that, we pray out mysteries. Mm -hmm. And so, so many times we're looking for an answer and we search for answers uh, that we don't know and we couldn't find on our own, but we don't in, you know, inquire of the Lord in a way that would pray out or in a sense, almost like, you know, like if I was going to do this. Yeah. Hey, you know, there it is, you know, <laughs> so we can pray out, we can, we can pull out of that, which there is an there is an answer for, you know, you're looking for something, you know, there is an answer. Um, and it's brought about by the spirit because even he, he wants us to know these answers, um, because that's part of his, the Holy Spirit's role in mm -hmm. our life is to show us things to come, yep. uh, to remind us of what he said, to be a comforter. How many of you, you know, it's so important for us to know that we have what he's saying so yeah. anyway so i just prayed in the spirit and asking the lord and I'm, I'm sharing this with you i know i'm sharing with the whole team but I, I think this is helpful for just anyone leading absolutely um and whether you're leading your family or whatever you all i mean everyone you know is a leader god's called us to be a leader leaders but i was just asking the lord well, how do i measure in this time what do we because everything's so different and then even i, I found myself assessing some of the things that we do measure uh and and when the lord as after i was kind of praying about it, lord just drop this um uh, do everything for the glory of god right mm -hmm. so there's a scripture and uh um i think it's in colossians uh let me, let me turn there real quick yeah. um i didn't i wasn't planning on sharing this part so this is just the start though right yeah that's good man. so uh Galatians, ephesians philippians colossians here we go colossians. did we have to do that <laughs> yeah genesis <laughs> exodus leviticus <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> From the very beginning. <laughs> Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Yeah. Um, uh, but in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, it says, whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So like the, we do everything unto him, right? Mm -hmm. And like for his glory. That, that's, that's ultimately what, what will bring direction in this time is that my, my actions would simply be for him. Yeah, that's good. Absolutely. And, and what happened, what, what will happen is there is that'll eliminate some of the things that I do. Okay. It'll also bring about some things for me to do. Mm. Because I think uh, there's an idleness in this time. Um, and, and almost just like we're trying to push a button to get something out, you know, yeah. like the vending machine B7, you know, yeah. the things. I don't know if you guys still have those. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, B7, you're like, and it's just not working. You're, you're, it's just like it's spinning, but like it's, nothing's falling down, you know, like you're not able to get what, the satisfaction. So you turn to something else or something else or something else. Yeah. And eventually uh, what you see is you just see almost a vegetative state of just uh, we're going to wait until. Mm, right. We're going to wait until things pass or things fade or whatever to, to, to move forward. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> anyway, so just talking to the Lord, you know, about that, him just dropping that direct. It's like, wow, that just brought such pretty and such application to eat just my days yeah. for him. And a lot of like, and I, like I was saying at the very beginning, a lot of times what we're doing is not for, for it, we move from for him to for our boss, yep. for our family, yep. um, for the house payment. Right. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, but, but if we can get back to the core mm. of what we were created for, um and that's for him yeah that's so good to him walking with him uh you know in this time even like you know you're kind of back in the garden if you will right yeah, yeah. that that mentality to walk with him in the cool of the day and find out what he's what he's saying yeah. and um it'll bring like, like i said it'll bring not only purpose which is you know ultimately that fulfillment that we're looking for but it'll bring progress because yeah. As we were created to progress, he he the command he gave us was to be fruitful and multiply, so do the earth conquer, like to conquer. So that means there would be an advancement. So within every human being, within God's creation, mankind, there is a we gotta we gotta conquer, we gotta progress. We got yep. there's something for us to do, right? Yeah. Yep. And there's there's a fulfillment because at our very core, that's what happened. And you even look at God, that's how he was, that's what he's done. You yep. know, the universe. Poof, you know, he's, ex he's taken where there was darkness, light, bringing light. He's, he's a creator. Yeah, you bet. And so are, and so are we. So, um, 
So anyway, I wanted to set all that up by that and just say, uh, and then just bring this, this little passage that we've maybe all read. We probably preached it on Vision Sunday and, uh, you know, over years and years and years. And I'm going to say the book, two th- verses 2, 2 through 3. What yep. is it? What book? What do you book of the Bible? It starts with an H. Habakkuk? Oh, there it is. We, there it is. You know, because we're going to say what? We're going to say, write the... What are we going to write? We're going to write the vision. Write the vision down. We're going to make, make it plain. plain. Make it clear. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Make it clear so yep. that the herald or those that read, you know, read it can run with it. Run with it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Run with that vision. Right. Absolutely. Run with that goal. Run with that plan. Run with that. Here's what we're going to accomplish. Kind yep. of deal. And though it tarries, wait for it because it will come it. right on It'll time. It will come on time. Let me tell you, it's happening. And yep. we preach this stuff, and we, you know, we get excited about this stuff, and we have taken a lot of, I, I think just the world uh, too, has taken principles of the Bible uh, that, that God has, has, has declared and said, if you will make what your goal is clear, yeah. if you make it plain, if you'll lay it out before you, um, you can, you'll, you'll accomplish it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but I wanted to, I, in this time, I hear a lot of people, you know, you hear a lot about making goals, or, or you know don't let just sit idle and things like that yep. and so what ends up happening is that and i use that word making goals that's mm-hmm. a lot of what's happening and um and really what we're doing is we're chasing squirrels yeah okay because when you look in, in habakkuk what, what god was telling this prophet he says hey write down what i'm saying yeah he didn't say write Take down a goal. Goals. yeah no exactly he didn't say Write down what you've always wanted to do. Yeah. So that you can do it. He yep. said, write down what I write down what I'm telling you right now. Yeah. Write down what I'm telling you because what I'm telling you is a, is a word that is for you. It is a promise that's a vehicle, if you will, yep. for for your fulfillment. Yeah. Uh, it's a vehicle that has within it the ability to take you and carry you to the place that I've designed for you that will bring to you what you need. Yep. That's why the Holy Spirit was given to us to remind us of what God's word mm-hmm. and God's word to us to show us that he said, I'm not going to speak of anything except for what the father has said. And the reason why is because there's something about God's word to us. Not only is it his plan for us, but yep. it is his life. It yep. is that which frees us. It's that which fulfills us. If you, if you and I were just to sit down and just talk about the word of God and, and what it, all the kick, you know, he sent his word and healed them. All of those, I mean, just the power of the word of God, man, uh, it, we would be, we could spend hours. Mm. And so it's so important for us, even in this time, to not let a goal or um, uh, other things cause us to be our drive. Yeah. But let let doing it under the Lord do the glory. And it could be, and I'm not saying you can't uh, do whatever it is you do. You know, it says in uh, Corinthians, this is whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do it all for the glory of God. Yeah. God. In other words, just that understanding that I'm doing it unto him and for his glory, it will bring uh, some clarity uh, to some of the things that um, I'm just making for myself versus some things that would actually bring progress and fulfillment that my heart really longs for and God desires for me and my family. Yeah, that's good. So that's kind of, uh, you know, kind of hanging, hanging on on that. To, to me, that's what would be where I would, what would start is it, 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 to share with you is just, man, it's so important for us to hear what God is saying. Yep. And, um, and, and, and again, if I'm going to do it unto him, I, I got to hear what he's, what he said. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Got to hear what he's, what he's asked. Absolutely. So. You know, one thing in that, and that scriptures that you were just reading in Habakkuk, like verse, verse one of chapter two, it says, I will climb upon my watchtower, stand on my guard post there. I will wait to see what the Lord says. Oh, I love so, it. It just, it's so important. Like I, I just love some of the words that you even said, they're just redefining progress. Like those are just such key words because yeah, I know even for my personality, I'm a real driven kind of guy. And so it's, I'm always constantly, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? And I think one thing, even for my own personal life is, yeah, like what you just said is I'm almost, I used, I guess the word the Lord gave me was reset. It's kind of a yeah. reset time. So I want to redefine my steps. I want to redefine my own life. 
What's important? Well, from what I see in the verse, it's like he's called me first and foremost into a relationship with him. That's right. Corinthians 1 9 talks to us about that. Like God is faithful. He has called us into relationship with himself. And so my, my goal in life, especially in this season, is not to, you know, advance and get the next best thing and see how many languages I can learn in this time. It's actually to get to know him in a more intimate way. That's and awesome. I just, I love the way that you say that. So it's really, I'm redefining progress in my life. And I think that will help just calm a lot of stress and anxiety that is out there. Because not only, I know one people have one thing, it's there's the whole, you know, the fear side of it where people are going, oh, what's going to happen? How's this all going to change? And then there's the other side. I've seen quotes, I've seen posts and uh, people, I'm sure well, well intended, but it's kind of said, well, use this time wisely because, you know, you have all this time off. You better be, you know, get that, that side hustle going. You better yeah. have that extra job going up. This is a time to make things happen in your life. Yeah. And there's that extra added stress that, like you said, that the world's putting on you. The Lord's not putting anything on you and I, except for what he's wanting, what he's explaining and sharing with us. I, I just, I love the way you brought that across, Nate. That's so good, man. I love that. I love what you, exactly what you're saying. Just, man, redefining, redefine progress instead of trying to continue on a path that I think, you know, there's always, if we're going to end up at the destination that God desires, there's always course correction. Yep. But sometimes, we get our head so down yeah. as far as like, you know, like pushing so hard and we're on the, we're on the go. And, and then somebody tap, taps us on the behind says, good job, buddy. And, yeah. and we're hearing good job. We're hearing the paychecks coming in the, 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 you know, we've got the C2 or, yeah. you know, whatever. And so all these things we're, we're, we're progressing or so we think, and we didn't take a moment just to look up and go, is this good? You know? And I'm not saying we don't do that. I'm just saying there's some, Sometimes we need to, this is such a great opportunity for us to listen a little longer, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and, and even, you know, to wait upon the Lord, right? Yeah. So many times, um, I'm going to talk, be talking about this a little bit this weekend, but we wait upon the, we wait upon the promise more than we wait upon the Lord. Yeah. yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. we're waiting upon what God said and the promise that we could get there and that we could have that and that we could conquer this and that we could build this instead of waiting upon him which brings about that which is necessary yep. to to you know the strength to rise above and to do what he's asked of us to do with him yep. that's greater than what we could do on our own because to be quite honest the things that god has asked of us and created us for are you know they say our eyes haven't seen our ears haven't yep. heard yep. neither's entered into our heart the things that he has prepared for us that love him yet the spirit yep. of god is revealing him to us so yep. there's things that are like it's bigger than you think yep um uh, you know and it's going to take uh you and i holding on to or waiting on on him and seeing from another place mm -hmm. say, when we wait upon him we will mount up like uh, on wings like eagles and so what we know about eagles is not only do they spread their wings and, and they mount up they go up but their eyesight is so great but what what they need is it, for their eyesight to really thrive is a higher vantage point. Yeah, you bet. So, so even in this time, like you're saying, progress, get to know me more, yeah. wait upon me. Yeah. What, what, what's what's going to come out of this time is there's going to be greater clarity. Oh, uh, absolutely. Should we wait upon the Lord instead of try to put something in the oven quick yeah. or set a goal that wasn't one that was up from the watchtower, like yeah, you, you said, bet. And finding out what he said, and we begin to build other things, and you know, and and ultimately, it's a distraction, mm. you know, yeah, and and a diversion. Yeah, you bet. It's a diversion. I think Absolutely. even in this time, I think if I was going to describe a lot of what's in this time, I think I just I just keep on sensing diversion. Yeah, so much diversion. Like people can't even get a clear picture of what's going on. It's just like it's a diversion. It's totally. it's like smoke and mirrors, and it's like. You can see truth in it, but there's just so much, there's a diversion going on. There's a diversion because even what people are saying doesn't match up or mesh up. And, and I think that would be even too what is trying, the enemy would love to do in the church is create instead of in the time in which we live. Jesus yeah. is coming back. Yeah, he is. He is. I mean, he's, coming, he's coming back. He is. And it's time for, for us to be on point. And we're in the right place at the right time, doing the right things with the right people. You've heard yeah. it. You've maybe said it, but I'm telling you, it's, we, we need to be in the right place, doing the right things 
uh, with the right people and, yep. and, and following, and I would say this, writing the right words. Yep. That's so good. And when we do that, even, um, it, it, it'll, it'll bring it about. And so many times, even in this time, you'll, you'll set up a goal, uh, but it, 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 write the decision that you've made. And I, rather, rather than writing the vision, write the decision. Yeah. God said a lot of things to you and me, right? Mm -hmm. And some of these things are in a, I had to, I found this, right? I found, like, this is on like a, I don't know what it is on, but it's all these notes that were so good and so, so God, right? Yeah. It's what he said, but like, how many times do things that he said just kind of get buried, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. And, and so you can write all the things that he said, but sometimes it's us writing our decision. Yeah. Writing what, what, what we have decided, you know, even like Abraham, like, I'm going to believe God. Yeah. For what he said on this. Like, yeah. he, God said a lot of things to him. Right. But there was something that he said, I'm going to, I'm not going to look at this. I, I, though the fact is, my body's like this. This is my decision. Yeah. I'm going to believe God is able. Yeah. That God is able to yep. keep his promise. So Absolutely. that's my decision. Yeah. And, and when I make, when I, when I write my decision, what happens is, is there's a, to thought to, to step in what God, you know, in order to follow what God has said, but ha there's a, there's an empowerment yeah. and also the accountability to my will. When I already know if he's given me his word, he will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, man, that's so good. So then we're, then we're truly partnered. We're truly partnered. Yeah. Yeah. I want to just another thought there too, what you were just saying, man, like Nate, that's also good. Um, if I had my coffee cup, I'd cheers you on that. That was I know. So I was like, this is so exciting right here. You <laughs> this, know? this is it. That's it. <laughs> you know, Thanks when, you're, when, when you're sharing, <laughs> yeah. um, but when you're sharing just a, another thought too, like, I think one of the things, you know, just Jamie and I, we've been having a lot of conversations too about one of the things that we're seeing and from the verse, like Romans chapter 12, verse two, like he talks so much about being transformed. And I think what we're looking so much is we're looking for an external force or something to let up in the external realm to kind of like what you're saying that that B7, that, uh, that vending machine, we're looking for something to happen on the outside to give us that peace or to give us that satisfaction of what we're looking for. And that word transformation has been something that's been stirring in my heart. God doesn't work from the outside in. He works from the inside out. And when you're, when you're sharing all these like redefining progress, like everything that you're talking about goals and, you know, setting these, these temporary things, there's nothing wrong with having some goals, like yeah, whatever that may be, you want to lose some weight, you want to, you know, exercise, whatever, that's all great. But God does things from the inside out. And I think if we lose sight of like what everything that you're sharing about being still and know that he's God really taking the time to be with him, to hear from him, writing down what he's saying to us on the inside, we're looking to change. We're looking for things to happen on the outside. That is so superficial. That is so surface level. And one thing that the Lord's been helping me and dealing with me and our church is getting away from casual Christianity. Like that is enough. Like we're done playing church. And part of that is I think a lot of these external things we're looking for, can okay, I need the biggest pay paycheck or I need the nicest car or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with any of that stuff, but it has to be in its proper set and its proper priority. And again, like when it comes to uh, transformation, it says by being transformed on the inside, by changing the way that you think, let God change you by changing the way that you think. And so again, like I find this is where part of the season that we're in is we're being these living sacrifices that need to learn to shut up, get still, and really allow the Lord to work some things in us and through us so that he's able to have his way in our lives. And so ultimately, like you said, I, I love it to get us to the destination he has us for all along, which eventually is he's, he's coming back for us real soon. But in the meantime, we need to be with the right people. We need to be seeing things from the highest level rather than trying to nitpick and how can I just you know crawl out of the hole so I can get out of this situation. We're not just trying to survive COVID. God has already raised us above this to see things from a higher level. So I'm like, let the transformation time begin for the church. And we really need to start seeing things the way that he sees it. And the only way is like what you, the verse that you, again, I'm bringing that back, Habakkuk chapter two, one, climb upon my watchtower to see what he wants to say. And I like that to see what he says. So I, I love that every time he speaks, it gives vision to us. So I've been caught in that my own self too, as I've been like trying to, trying to get a vision or trying to think something up that seems Christian. 
And a lot of times I've just left out burnt out going like, God, well, I can't figure it. But he will just talk to you. Vision will come when you oh. spend time with him. Come on. <laughs> that's, that's so good. And then when he does bring his word and vision yeah. does come, yeah. what vision ultimately you're seeing there is hope. It's, it's a yes. picture of hope. Yep. that you can pursue Absolutely. It's a picture of hope that you can hold on to. It's just, it's, it's God's words bring sight and what his words, when they bring sight, I see a promise. I see the yep. evidence of what I, you know, of what he said, this hope that's in my heart and I can hold on to that. Listen yep. to this. I, I, I don't know. I was like, I, I feel like I'm supposed to bring this book. I was sharing with you earlier, yep. this old, old book and listen to exactly you know, how we're transformed. You said we're transformed by the way we think, or the Bible says that, you know, and that's exactly right. It's from the inside out. I want to, I, I, I want to talk just this line because it identifies ultimately faith. Right? Mm, yeah. And so it's so funny, you know, when you said, Hey, let's talk, you know, let's have a, a God talk, you know, like kind of like believers voice, you'll be Kenneth and I'll be Gloria and, or vice versa. And I was like, all right, you know, yeah. I said, I'll get my coffee cup, you know, and all that. But I, what I heard in my heart really was that God wants us a recall of faith mm. in our lives, that, that there's a trust, not looking to the outside, but again, but just simply uh, understanding the way that I think brings about what I, the promise and, and what I desire. In other words, the, what I believe. And so listen, this yeah. is by uh, F.F. Bosworth from way back in early 1900. And, and, and he says this, um, that we base our faith, and he's talking about healing, okay? But let's talk about everything in our life. Yep. To the extent we base our faith on our improvement or are affected or are affected by our symptoms or by what we see or feel instead of by the word of God alone, just to that extent, our faith is not real. Mm. In other words, so many times we base what we believe and how we think based upon what we see instead of what god's word has said yeah. we 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 you pray for me to get healing or to be healed and we leave disappointed because we thought we would have been healed that's good yeah but anytime i'm more excited about what happens yeah or the results of the prayer versus <clears throat> the promise of the word that's misplaced faith and misplaced trust it's not faith at all no. it's it's actually being led by our sight yep. and being led by our feelings but he tells us that we're going to experience the god kind of life the just shall experience life or live the yep. experience the god kind of life by faith. faith and faith is just that it is from the inside out it's a different way of thinking it's a way of thinking that's brought about by what god has said mm -hmm. and so uh, this is the victory well you can't have victory if you're not fighting the right battle right Right, you can't yep. you can't put the W in the column. Yeah, to heaven, and you can hear "Well done," uh, but you can hear wrong assignment. Right? <laughs> yeah. You know, right. Like, there's a story. I mean, but anyway, so just um, and I would just read one more highlight piece. Yeah, it, it, it means the word of God, not what we see or feel, shall be the basis of our faith. Looking unto the promise of God is to be kept until the result. Like in other words. Not we're looking for the result, yep. and then we're going to believe God. Yeah, right. Exactly. Hold on to what God has said, and it's just why it's going back, like you said, getting on the wall, changing, you know, let it happen from the inside out instead of the outside in, looking for a result and chasing results instead of the word hmm. from God. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, so good, man. I, that's, man. That's so powerful. You know, like, and that really ties into what you were just saying, too, about Abraham. He considered not his own body. No consider. Not only that too, but if like reading Hebrews 4, something that really popped at me too, it's he considered not only his own body, but he also considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb. So there was a lot that he had to consider, not, not only his own physical being, but he had to consider not the being of his wife's own womb. Um, you know, one thing that like I'll just mention this last thought too, but uh, we had read about, or we had been just done a series of just on faith. Like I love that word, just to recall the faith and getting back into that. And uh, there's in the passion Bible in Hebrews 11, it talks about uh, Sarah. I can't got to find that right. right. Um, and the way that the passion Bible brought it out. Um, 
anyways, it's, so, it's really good. You have to read it for yourself. It's delicious, but um, <laughs> it really just talks about like um, that really our faith doesn't even necessarily rest in what God would promise he would do. Our faith rests in who he is. And really the importance, like I love what Sarah said, she counted him faithful. I think that's in the New Living Bible. She counted him faithful. So like really her eyes necessarily weren't on, I'm going to have a baby. I'm going to have a baby. I'm going to have a baby. Again, that's, that's at a surface external level. Her so eyes came to a higher level. And she said, I like what you said, the decision she made, I count him faithful. That is as high as it can go. And I think God loves that faith. He loves when people trust his character and his nature. And the result is the natural will take care of itself because our faith, which is a spiritual substance, will we'll, we'll look after it. I think we really got to flip that That's, song, what you said, that like, faith does not work by what we... Oh, go ahead. I'll, you jumped in. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. I'm, I, yeah. I'm, I'm listening. I'm like, yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're talking about Abraham and you're talking about Sarah and, 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 and God's, God's word to them and not considering the womb and this and that and the other thing. But the whole promise or this whole, the whole story of Abraham was simply about God bringing to Abraham um, a child that could inherit the blessing. Yeah. Right. All this was about that. Yeah. And so, and it depended, Abraham at first had to depend upon God's word. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what we also see is when once he depended upon God's word and Isaac was born, right. Yep. Now it was really easy to see it, to see. Mm -hmm. how god would move yeah right Absolutely. then what did god do he said i'm asking for the channel because i want you to know the source mm -hmm. I, because this the channels are going to change yep. the source will never change i'm asking you for the channel Absolutely. the isaac the thing that you can now see yep. the how i'm going to bring it about and and your faith will now move from dependent <laughs> upon me and my word and my promise to this channel of isaac and God said, I'm asking for the channel so that you would know the source. And what did Abraham say? God will provide. When Remember Isaac? He's yep. going up to the mountain to make the sacrifice. He says, no, Father, where's the lamb? Where's the sacrifice? He said, yep. the, Lord, the Lord will provide. Yep. And, and it was that time that God said, I can use you because you will command your children and your children's children after me. In other words, look to not the channel. Look not to the Isaac. Look not to the fulfillment from that. That first word, that that oh, job, man. that whatever, yeah. but look to yeah. going to be faithful. I've never changed. I'm the same as different. Anyway, so it gets me excited <laughs> for you and me to remember, like, look to God. Look to him. Look to Absolutely. God, not the channel. Look to the source. We yep. see this with Abraham. He had to trust God yep. with, with his, at his word to bring about Isaac. And he had to trust God yep. with Isaac. Yep. And, 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 and he was willing to what? To let go of that channel. You bet. To let go of the Isaac because he considered God faithful. He was more holding on to the word of God. Yeah. The source of God. God will provide. Yeah. Than any channel or fulfillment or of promise or, you know, you know, anyway. So even just, you know, when it comes to healing, when it comes to provision, when it comes to your marriage, when it comes to all these things, yep. sometimes we get a word and God moves and man, it's so awesome. But then if that channel was to change. Right. Oh, you know, yeah. it goes all fuzzy, man. We lose our mind. Yeah. Right. Uh, we lost our job. What are we going to do? Let me tell you, God has not changed. He hasn't changed. He's not changed. He's not changed. He's not Nate, changed. that's so good. You know, one, like every time you talk, it's, it's kind of dangerous that we're both on this. Cause we could just go all day. On we go <laughs> we could, know, know. You know, one, one other thought too, like, just the, like when you're just saying all that, like, man, I love that the channels may change this. The source does not. You know, in, uh, when Jehoshaphat, Second Chronicles chapter 20, when Israel is being encountered by all those other nations that were coming against them, uh, the prophet had said, fear not, like, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Oh, so it's so okay, funny. not necessarily, I don't quite know what I'm going to do yet, but I'm not going to just stay in this state of, I'm not sure, and oh, what's going to happen to me? No, my eyes are on the source. And I just think, man, like the deliverance of that nation, Israel, they were in, like, talk about a pandemic. Like that's a nationwide, you're going to be wiped off the face of the planet. Yeah. Yet, I mean, they didn't fear. There was no concern. Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. 
And man, from that moment, of course, they got the answer. They were told to go send the worship. And all, all of that you see, and I just think it's phenomenal. What a, what a testimony that is for us to see today, like for even my own self. How do I, do I know what the future holds? No, I don't know what to do necessarily. My next step, whoever may be listening, but my eyes are on you, what you said who you are. You are a God of faith. You are a God who is faithful to your word to watch over. He even said that he is. So man, I, that just blessed me. I, I think I'm ready to kick some holes in the wall right now. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a really good mood. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Are, are you ready to raise this uh, sanctuary under construction too? So that's yeah, cool. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. So I can maybe break something in there. That, that'd be Come fine. On, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> awesome. Oh man, that's Thank cool. You know. Man, Nate, thank you so much for your time, man. That was that was such a blessing. Yeah, I love I love just God talks. I know they go they go quick. We talked just the other day, and I looked at my phone. I was like, oh, that was thirty minutes. Well, yeah. well praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, praise, praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Awesome. Well, everyone, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. What a what a blessing it is to do this life with you, people of faith. Uh, we love you.